What is up, everybody? I'm your host, Rob Younce, and thank you for tuning back into the KaneCast Show. If today's your first episode, you are in for a real treat. If you've been with us before, we really appreciate you coming back. Either way, today's guest is a total dude. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask a favor of you to help us grow the show. First of all, smash that like button. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast host, give us a like. Two, drop us a comment to let us know what you like about the show or don't like. Three, help us grow our community by subscribing. That lets others know that this show's legit. Four, show us some love with a review. Five, and the best is to share it. Send this to your friends or your enemies who are missing baseball right now and need a fix. Today, we are bringing you some major BDE with our guest, Josh Wright. Josh owns Wright Fitness Systems in Huntington Beach, California, and he's the strength coach for Canes Baseball. He works primarily with our national and American teams, and he also trains some of the best amateur and pro players in his gym. Josh just gets results. Players get stronger, faster, and also stay healthy. So let's get stretched out and ready for some scap gains. What's that? <laughs> right. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, we have a real treat for you today. We've got an awesome, uh, well, we've got one guest who's, who's been with us before. We've got a new guy here, um, not new to us, but new to you as our audience. Uh, we've got Josh Wright with Wright Fitness uh, out of California, and we've got uh, Jeff Petty with us again. So, um, Josh, thanks so much. Tell us a little bit about you and, uh, and, and how, you, how we're all connected, if you would. Um, as you previously stated, I'm uh, Josh Wright from uh, Huntington Beach, California. Um, I have a 7,000 square foot uh, baseball specific training facility out here. Um, been up and running for the last 12 years, just moved into a brand new facility. A um, little bit bigger, I have physical therapy in the building. Um, looking to add some cages and some mounds and just kind of be one-stop shop for everybody on the West Coast. Um, um, currently, I'm the head strength and conditioning coach for, for the Canes. Um, I'll be entering my fourth year doing that um, and have no plans on slowing that down. It's It's been, it's been great. Um, the travel ball experience out here in SoCal is a little bit different than everywhere else just due to weather and kids kind of never shut down. And so I got frustrated. We're just kids over the years just throwing too much and playing too much. And instead of complaining, I decided to get involved and it's worked out beautifully. And I think the product of athletes that we have and how they continue to develop into pro ball and you know, or college for that matter, like the guys are prepared and they're healthy. And that's due to the fact that you know, we play a limited schedule and we're able to kind of stay in our lane and do the things that we're good at. And thankfully I can cover that slice of the pie as best as I can for, for our organization. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you've been with the Canes for four years, Jeff, you know, I know we've had one or two guys that have been in that role, you know, tell me what Josh has meant to your, you know, he's been working with your team a lot. Um, tell me what he's meant to, to your guys and, and helping them, you know, pass the Canes and into college and into Pro Bowl. Yeah, I mean, Josh has done an excellent job with our players. I mean, it's kind of a it, – it's been an innovative way of training, really. Um, before he came along, we had a couple guys that, that did a fine job, but Josh is really kind of inept in, in all the new stuff going on in baseball training and – and you, I think Nick Prado was how I first heart, heard about him. Nick played with us kind of as a guest player. Oh, what was that four years ago? I, these years run together, but uh, Nick was with us on a long trip. And uh, obviously Nick was a first rounder from where uh, Josh is out there from. And I heard about him through some different guys out there. And then we kind of met out in Long Beach and then he came on board and the rest is kind of history. He's helped a lot of our players, our, our kids. Love him, you know, because the kids, what kids were getting, you know, they, they take their stuff seriously. You know, we're not getting the run-of-the-mill average Joe out there trying to have a good time. I mean, the guys that are on our national team and our American teams, 
at the 17 year old division, I mean, these guys are looking at making baseball a career. So, I mean, right. usually they, they, that training piece is a big, big deal to these kids. And some of them have trainers and some of them know what they're doing. And then a lot of them are green, man, and don't have a clue what they're doing. So it's, he, he does a great job at grabbing the guys that, that do know what they're doing and have trainers. And, you know, he's, he's not, um, he doesn't really step on toes. You know, he'll say, Hey, well, I'm not, I'll kind of put in this with what you're doing. What do you think about that? And he doesn't shove it down their throat. And then the guys that don't have a clue what they're doing, you know, it's free game there. So we've got guys fly, flying in from all over the country to work out with Josh. And then guys from all over the country, uh, Josh is writing programs for them as well. And, and that piece where our, our guys can train on the road is a big deal. And especially our pitchers, uh, with, you know, we'll carry 15 pitchers on a road trip. Well, obviously, they're not all going to throw in one day. So, you know, heck, in a five-day span, you'd be lucky to get them all in So in, in right. some cases. So right. the fact that he's got them on schedules, hey, you're throwing tomorrow, or hey, you threw yesterday, or you threw two days ago, or hey, you threw two days ago, and we really want to have you hot tomorrow, or whatever the case may be. Him and Jason Mills, our pitching coach, have done a real good job, you know, communicating with each other, keeping these guys, like you said, healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, Josh, I, I love seeing, you know, you on social media, you do a great job of that, you know, with your guys. And, you know, one of the things I, I like about the Kane social media too, is seeing how hard you work the guys after their outings, you know, seeing the exactly. pictures there, you know, building up a sweat and, and, and really, um, you know, really just getting a workout in. And, and, you know, most people don't really tie that in. Um, I know this situation, you know, with the, uh, the COVID-19 is really affecting, you know, you and all gyms. I mean, for the most part, you guys are, are shut down. You know, how has that helped um, or, or hurt your, your remote training business and some of, the, some of the programs you're sending out to guys, you know? Because I know you got a lot, a lot of guys in pro ball. you got a lot of guys that are, um, you know, that are, that are there, high school kids, very high, highly touted draft picks. What are you doing there? How, how's, how's the remote training going? Um, the remote training is almost busier than I would, than I have time for. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, having a wife and three children under the age of six, naturally, like I'm kind of tired at the end of the day, regardless, um, right. you know, when things are going, even when things are going well, um, and everyone's healthy and in the gym, um, there's a lot going on in life. But, um, I mean, frankly, like once this, virus started picking up steam um i kind of like i told my wife like i'm gonna lock myself in the gym for about a week and you'll see me very you know very sparingly um and so i basically um came up with like 12 weeks of of workouts for guys that like could go to the park and do it or do it at, you know do it at home in the garage and you know i mean you need very minimal to I mean you can be creative with some equipment um I mean if you have access to a couple of dumbbells or some kettlebells or something but you know everything is pretty much like guys out here go to the beach and do it um you know fortunate to have that good weather where we can go sure. escape and hang out and do it there but um uh, but I sat and I tried to be extremely proactive um to absorb whatever, you know, kind of hits this industry is going to take. Um, I mean, thankfully, like I haven't, you know, I mean, frankly, um, I've had so many more guys reach out um, and that's guys that are local guys from, you know, I had a kid from Maine DM me the other day. Um, no offense. Sometimes I forget Maine's a state. Um, you know, like, <laughs> no offense to anybody from Maine, but like, I, I mean, I've never, I've never it's been. A, that is know, really like, across the country for you. Like literally is, can't get any yeah. farther away. <laughs> no. Um, and you know, like it's, it's, it's humbling for me. Um, you know, having the, I don't want to say like I have the market like cornered down here, but like, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of athletes. Um, that have done some really cool things that make me look a lot cooler than I actually am. And I, you know, pride myself in the thought process that goes into the workouts um, that not a lot of people see. 
Um, I try to do as much behind the scenes work and grind so that way I can enjoy the teaching aspect of it when I'm with the athlete. Um, but getting back to what I've done is 12 weeks of programming. Um, you know, we do three week blocks of progressions and stuff. So, um, you know, you kind of get your feet wet the first progression and then they progressively get harder and harder and harder. Um, definitely challenging though. Um, you realize how accustomed to, you know, deadlifting you are and squatting you are and like having some tools. Um, so trying to implement, you know, the strength component when you just have your body weight, um, right. it, it is a little, it is a little tricky. Um, but you know, I feel like I put together a pretty comprehensive, um, program to continue to allow athletes that are, should be in season currently, um, you know, to maintain, um, you know, if not accelerate a little bit, the, the work that they put in all fall and all winter to get to this point. Um, so yeah, man, like literally locked myself in the gym for about a week. Um, my wife wasn't very happy, but you know, like, I mean, (laughs) I don't want to be reactionary. I want to be proactive. And I feel like now where I'm watching people around me, like I literally have a gym on one side of my walls and another one on the other side. And I mean, there's not a lot of traffic. Like they're like, they don't know what they're going to do. And I look at that as a preparation thing um, more than just, you know, roll, you got to roll with the punches. You got to get ahead of them. Absolutely. And I think, you know, your work, you know, you've been, you, you have been fortunate to work with some really talented guys, but they've also made great gains under you. So it's not like, um, it's not like it's smoke and mirrors. You know, I've seen those gains. I've seen guys go from, you know, a pop-up guy, um, wasn't really on a lot of radars and, and, you know, on the draft perspective, I guess, and watch him work with you. And then next thing you know, he's, he's a first rounder. He's a, and that, that's not, that's not – that's a combination of things. So it's not solely because they work with you, and it's not solely because they were great talent. There's a lot that goes into it. You work with a lot of those types of athletes. So my, my question to you is, you know, what are the things that you see in those types of guys that, you know, those top top type of guys, top-tier athletes that you don't see in, in others? What, what really sets them apart? Their willingness to have – their ego checked they all come in and they're touted you know they all come in they're good um for instance um this off season this major league off season um like i was fortunate to have adley rutschman in the gym um you know obviously first overall pick in the draft yeah he's pretty good player of the you know player of the decade in college baseball you know like pretty decent resume um, and without, you know, like throwing him under the bus, I mean, like we got done with the warm up, and like, he thought we had just finished the workout. And I mean, it's all body weighted. It's all like an assessment for me to see, you know, strengths, weaknesses, asymmetries, like all the, for me to be able to just kind of sit back and judge and then come back and say, okay, man, like, you know, for your position, we need to make sure we have X, Y, and Z taken care of, and X is okay, and Y and Z are lagging behind, and, you know, um, and I think for guys of that caliber, um, most guys aren't surrounded by people that give them the truth all of the time. They don't want to be the guy, like, nobody wants to be the guy that tries something new, and then he gets dinged up, or, you know, you don't want to be on the personal side of things. You don't want to tell somebody, hey, um, you know, like, you suck at this. You know, like, right. they, you know, if, if you can't check the ego, then that relationship never really has a chance to grow. Like, so he was very humble, very, like, came in, um, you know, wanted to learn, wanted to, you know, take his. He had a pretty good, you know, they did a pretty good job with him at Oregon State. Um, he ran me through a lot of the stuff that they did. Um, and, I mean, I thought, you know, I mean, especially for a college program, um, you know, there's not a lot of guys that are just baseball guys for as far as 
um, that's the training program that they're in charge of. They have multiple sports. Right. So it's really hard to be good at writing a program for one specific sport, let alone five or six. Um, so um, I am blanking on um, his name, but he did a, he did a pretty good job um, of, of checking the majority of the boxes that needed to be checked. Um, given what he had on his plate. Um, but like always, I mean, there's always, this is an evolutionary process. Like what I did five years ago compared to what I do now, like I feel like I should apologize to my athletes from five years ago sometimes. You know, like you don't well, I remember you, you saying know. that. I remember you telling me that one time we were sitting around talking and you were like, man, me five years ago, totally different than now. So yeah, I, you're right. It has totally evolved. I mean, totally, like every, every couple of months, I mean, you know, it seems like there's, there's things that are proven and there's things that we thought were correct that, you know, aren't necessarily, you know, like negative, but there are just so many other ways to do it more efficiently. Um, you have to, I mean, you have to do your due diligence and stay on top of that. And that's something that I think gets lost in translation because I have such a easygoing you know relationship with my athletes that people right. think i show up drink a cup of coffee tell these guys what to do and i and they're really not you I mean they're not seeing everything that goes on behind the scenes so absolutely this i i looked at this this whole situation as a way for me to continue to be creative since i was designing stuff for guys with no equipment i looked at it as now this is a good chance for a lot of these athletes that if they are if they played all summer and then they go to their high school teams in the fall and they still have to throw innings in the fall like they're able to kind of hit the reset button now and set themselves up to be fresh for the summer hall this year to go into the fall and then hopefully they can get back to a normal like have that winter break whether they're playing a different sport or they just get to shut down for a few months um, so I'm hoping and I'm preaching to my athletes now that they can use this, you know, not as like, I get it. everyone's sad that they're not playing high school baseball right now or college baseball or professional, like nobody's happy about what's happening. Um, but especially for the high school and college guys, um, who have been throwing essentially, I don't want to say nonstop, but you know, with very oh, scarce. Yeah with not the amount of rest that I would like for them to have, it's a great time for them to, to be able to go back to the drawing board. And, you know, we can work on, you know, some of the scapular work and we can work on, you know, their spinal mobility and their ankle mobility. And that can help prevent things that, you know, could, could flare up on them in the future. If we, if we get to the, you know, hammer the basics out now and get back to, get back to square one. So, right. Um, I think this break, this break is whatever you want to make out of it. You know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, you know, That's like, right. like it, there's got to be some lemonade made, um, you know, on the physical standpoint, that's getting back to the basics. And if you're not making it as a player, somebody else is that's trying to take your job, take your scholarship, take your spot on a travel team. You know, it, it, I, I tell, you know, the kids that we work with now's a great time. I understand you're, you know, you're, you're upset that you're not playing, but now's a great time to make gains and, and to go and, um, you know, be able to be, put your best foot forward when the time comes. We don't know when that switch is going to get flipped back on, but when it does, you've got to be prepared, you know. Yeah, I feel sorry for the guys, especially seniors that, you know, that lost a season. I feel bad for a lot of the kids that, you know, lost a season, but, it's out of our control. It's something, the only thing we can control is waking up in the morning and getting better every single day. So, you know, I, I can see why you're such a good fit with the Canes. I mean, I knew it before, but I can see, you know, in talking to you because you, you share the same philosophies as Jeff and, and really everybody in the organization, you know, in making sure that our kids are healthy, making sure that they're prepared. Um, you and I have kicked around, you know, several ideas of how to help prepare kids for those big events, you know, for those big tryouts or um, big camps that they go to where, you know, you get a shot to make a great first impression. Um, and I think your remote training is really going to help with that. I know, you know, I've talked to a lot of the guys that have done remote in the past with you and, 
you know, again, seeing great results and, and really like the programming. But, you know, they, they buy into you as well, and, and you fit in very well with us. Um, you fit in very well with our kids. You know, I know all the kids like you, and that's great because super important to build that relationship and that trust because when you're sending them a workout and telling them, hey, you need to be doing this, you know, if, if they don't do it, they don't buy into it, then they're not going to get the results of the program. So it's super important that, um, you know, the, the, the like, trust, and respect factors are there. And, and they are with you. You check all those boxes. Um, what do you like most about working with the Canes kids? What do you like most about, you know, uh, Jeff, not, not Jeff, but working with the kids <laughs> and, and the other coaches on the stand? Um, I mean, as far as – well, I'll start with the coaches. Um, as far as the coaches, like I'm the youngest guy out there, which I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse or a compliment because I'm about to be 37, which means we're all old and bald. Um, <laughs> but um, with the coaching, you know, it's not about trying to change guys into what you want them to be. It's not about, you know, oh, I taught this guy how to throw a slider. Now you're like, that's my guy in the draft. Like, it's, it's not, there's no, e like, again, there's no ego involved. It's legitimately about putting the athlete in the best position for him to showcase himself for college or the draft. And that right. ultimately is going to prepare him better for, college or pro ball, whatever that may be in his future, um, to not be that scared freshman going in on campus and then you waste your first year because you're just kind of trying to get your feet wet. Like, you know, knowing that the kids, like obviously we, we, we get some pretty talented guys on the, on the team. Um, like I can't, think of a kid and I'm like like I'm thinking of Corbin Carroll right now like I remember the first time I watched him take batting practice and we were at we were at a minor league field wherever we were in North Carolina we were at uh Holly Springs Salamanders Stadium yeah, in North yeah, Carolina yeah. you saw you saw him the first day that I saw him take PP I I was like it was like like he was him. hitting him I mean, they weren't even they weren't even rising until they were in the street, and the street is yeah. probably 60, 70 feet beyond the fence. Yeah, I mean, he's hitting balls four twenty, and like, and then I look over and I see Nolan Crisp, and I was like, I thought for a minute, I was like, why do we have a bunch of like twelve year olds out here? Like these like little like these little like circus midgets are running around playing baseball. You got one kid throwing ninety four, and another kid hitting balls across the street. <laughs> You know, and but and sometimes you know, like, <laughs> yeah. but like the the when when Corbin was in the cage, right? I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, my goodness, like this kid is absolutely hitting tanks right now. Nobody said anything to him about, hey, you should do this with your top hand, or you should do like. Why would you? Actually, well, <laughs> I'm, well, I mean, let me tell you what I did with Corbin. <laughs> I wrote his name in the three <laughs> every <Yeah>. day. <laughs> and I, smack, I, I maybe would tap him on the rear end and say, hey, you're going to make us look really good today. That's called good coaching right there. Yeah, I mean, you, you know what you do with Corbin Carroll from a baseball perspective is you just don't say anything to him. No, but – Give him a lot. But you're on the other side of it, like where you're training you, – you've got to coach him. I mean, you're, you're the one yes. that's going to get his body ready for professional baseball. But yes, I mean, I I mean you don't mess with that swing. Oof. No, no. But the majority, and again, this is part of the reason why I got into doing the travel ball deal, because most other people would try to do something and try to right. implement their own philosophy or whatever. Right. And like, let the kid be the kid. Like, you coach as needed. You don't need to just interject yourself for the sake of interjecting yourself because then when you really need to relay a message, it doesn't get, it doesn't resonate with the kid. So well, that's typically, that's typically because of ego. People want to show how much they know and you know what, I'm going to turn this guy, you know, he can run. So let's make him a little slapper. Let's let him hit balls in the gap rather than hitting balls out of the park. And you know, that that's that. And you're right. And that's one of the reasons I've, been around here for so long is because guys like Jeff and Dan and 
and all of our coaches don't have egos. I, it's not yeah. about them. It's about really helping the kids. And that's another reason why I think you fit in. I mean, I, I, you're, you, you, you know, you you fell in and, and you're, you're, you, you fit in, you know, seamlessly. And, um, you know, that's, it's been a great addition having you. What about the players? Tell me more about the players. You know, what's been your impression of, of the kids that, that, that we get? I mean, any common commonalities among them or anything like that? The biggest, I mean, A, like I haven't experienced a kid that I wouldn't want to work with again. Like, I, I really don't, you know, I mean, I really don't. I mean, and coming from West Coast to East Coast, I mean, there's, some, you know, everybody makes fun of me for eating avocado and everything. And, you know, like we all have, I mean, just culturally. Yeah, I eat from, avocado too, man. <laughs> well, I, avocado. All of, our, all of our heads look like avocado. Hey, I don't have any, when, when I don't have any cream in my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> then, then you're not bougie like me out here. So um, being, being able to bring West Coast guys that I train and have them mix in with East Coast kids and have that be seamless is something I'm very grateful for. And I feel like is a, a big credit to the kids, right? Because I, I see kids out here, um, and I only speak for, you know, my side of the country here, but I see kids out here um, and they don't treat each other very well, some, you know, sometimes. And again, going back to that ego, um, you know, everyone out here is competing for a scholarship to UCLA or, you know, um, I have got guys in the gym that, you know, play on 20 different travel teams. So they play against each other. And, like, when we're in the gym, everybody is – it's a very Canes environment where we all get along, right? Yeah. Like, for whatever reason, um, I don't know if it's their, you know, respect for me or – they're scared of me. I mean, I don't know. But, like, everybody gets along when we're in the gym, regardless of what name is on the jersey. Um, the difference with the Canes situation is all of the Canes kids are all I – mean, 98% of them, I think, are always committed before summer. Um, very rarely do we have that uncommitted guy, and usually he gets committed pretty quick if you do, um, like Ryan Fennington did last year. Um, but – these guys could easily take their foot off the gas pedal once they commit, and they don't. They're not complacent, you know, being a PG All-American. They're not complacent being an area code guy. They're not complacent being a USA guy. Like, they know, they know that there is more to achieve, and they don't, they don't take that opportunity for granted. They don't take days off. You know, watching – you know, a guy like Eddie Park last year, like he doesn't take a pitch off, let alone miss a workout, you know, or, um, you know, on the road, like he's always trying to get in the extra swings and like he's trying to maximize the small window of opportunity that he has to develop to play baseball. Um, and being around kids like that, it's, it's hard to find. It, it, really, it really is. Um, yeah. And when they get around each other, they're all friends with each other too. It's not my PG rankings higher than yours, or like there's no, there's none of that. Like they're all boys with each other, and it, it's like a proud big brother moment, you know, like to watch all these guys be, you know, be so close with each other, um, and to be a small, you know, to be a small part of that, um, you know, it's very. It's very humbling for me um, in the position that, I, that, that I'm in to be able to work with these guys. So, so you know, I know Jeff and, and everybody works really hard to, to make sure we find those guys because that is super important. So, Jeff, tell, let's, let's flip it around a little bit. How's it, how is it to, uh, to work with Josh? How do, you, how, do you, uh, how do you think he fits in with the staff and, and with the kids? I, I love working with them. Um, we get along great. We have a lot of – we have some differences, but we have a lot of similarities too. Um, and so, I mean, that's kind of the common thread. At the end of the day, though, we're about the kids, you know, and 
uh, he's trying to get them to a certain place and we're, I'm trying to do the same and I'm trying to create a culture where guys aren't just staying stagnant. You know, they're not, they are trying to get better every day. If we were running a travel ball team, like a lot of other people do, you know, we wouldn't have a strength coach on the road. People are like, well, people, people talk about the bus all the time. They're like, what's the deal with the bus? Well, I'll tell you why we bought the bus. We bought the bus because we could never hit on a field anywhere. So we always got stuck waiting in line for cages. I'm like, so the heck with this, I'm going to get a bus and we're going to rent a field off site. Our kids are going to get a proper stretch. And then we're going to take a professional on field batting practice. Our infielders are going to see hundreds of ground balls. Our outfielders are going to see lots of fly balls. Then we're going to hop back on the bus and we're going to go play baseball. Um, we just do things a little different than everybody else. But, you know, I love, I love Josh. I mean, he's, a, he's really become one of my best friends. Um, again, you know, we, there's differences. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're both chasing the same thing. Absolutely. And then, you know what, one thing um, I'd like to interject there is, you know, we all have differences and, and I would appreciate the way that we all work them out. You know, we talk them out and, and everybody really gets along. And, and there is a, a high level of respect, you know, amongst, uh, amongst all of us. And, you know, you can see it when after the game and wherever dinner or something like that, and everybody's busting each other up a little bit. So um, Josh is pretty good <laughs> at handing those out. And uh, Jeff is really, really good at, at throwing them right back. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like a brotherhood. And, and you know, we, we talk about family all the time. And we're lucky to have, you know, a guy like Josh in our, in our family. Because, that time uh, at dinner is – that's, well, that's well-earned time. That's exactly right. I mean, exactly right. finally get away from everything for a minute or two and, you know, get away. I mean, that's, that's well-earned time. So that's, that's different than being on the field with the kids for sure. Absolutely. Um, so, Josh, uh, you've got a ton of kids, maybe not high-level, super high-level athletes, maybe guys that are uncommitted that are trying to make a difference and, and trying, to catch, yeah, trying to catch somebody's eye. What kind of advice can you give to them? I mean, you know, we'll, we're going to connect them. We're going to show them how to get connected with you here in a few. But what kind of, uh, what kind of things would you, would you recommend? Um, I, I feel the biggest – the biggest thing that I see, um, and I and I see the irony of me being a travel ball coach with this. Before I before I say this, um, is kids are over showcased and they're mm -hmm. under they're under conditioned and they're under trained, um, and that is that is not just. I feel like it's worse. Uh, well, I know it's worse at the high school level. Um, expe again, especially out here. Where even like in December, I mean, like I can go surfing on Christmas Day. Right. right. You know, like there, we're not, it's not, we're, there's no snow out here. Um, you know, so I know I'm just going to keep rubbing that in. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. it's, it's 65 uh, here at Virginia Beach Day. I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, well, yeah, there you go. Knock on, knock on wood because tomorrow there'll be a tornado <laughs> warning, I'm sure. Right. Um, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, I, I, I have the biggest um, headache once high school season ends um, out here, which is um, since I moved it up, it's basically like the third week of May um, is when high school season ends because Memorial Day weekend, which is the following weekend, is when travel ball season starts. And kids that threw 80 innings in high school – go right into game one for their travel team and it's 85 pitches here and then four days later it's close this game out and you know like it's it really it hurts my head um so being with that being said obviously like our arcane schedule um and I can coherently speak for the national and American team since we basically have the same schedule is things are, I mean, there's five events that we're going to play in this summer. Um, and with the exception of the like South Carolina and Atlanta, like back to back, um, everything is like spread out. So when you, when kids are uncommitted and they're looking to do or looking to get on the map, 
right? Like the last thing you want to do is be seen every weekend by the same people. It's the last thing you want to do. Go out, like go out early June, go, go throw in something. If you're a pitcher, go throw in something and then take three weeks off. And, and when I say three weeks off, don't showcase for three more weeks. Go back to the drawing board, right? Get a little bit stronger. Get a little bit, get a little bit smarter with your pitchability or, you know, work on your change up or and whatever pitch, you know. And then go back out and showcase a better product. The guys that get seen all the time just get crossed off the list and they're just in the wash. You know, even if they even if they make a two or three mile an hour jump, they've been seen ten times. So right. it doesn't look it's not, it doesn't look impressive, you know. Versus um, again, I'll go back to Corbin Carroll. When I first met Corbin Carroll, he was a buck fifty three, and by the time he got drafted, everybody said he was too small. Too small. He's not durable. You know, he's a good athlete, but he's probably a third or fourth rounder. You know, he needs to get stronger and hit for more power. Okay, so. Over the course of the year, we had a goal of two to three pounds a month. And so I started with him in June, um, a year out from the draft. And he got drafted. So he started at 153 and got drafted at 174. We were right on, right on track um, with, with, that, with that weight gain that, that we wanted. You know, slow, incremental, sustainable gain is the way to do it. You know, throwing in one showcase, throwing in one showcase, is not going to get you, you know, unless you're throwing 97, right? But if you're, you know, most guys that are uncommitted, let's say you're between, you know, 83, 83 and 88, right? Like you're going to have to be seen a few times, right? Because guys that are 83, they want to see if you can get to 88. Guys that are 88, they're going to want to see if you can, you know, get to 90, 92, something in there. And the way to do that is by playing less baseball and doing the things behind the scenes, like getting stronger, getting healthy first, and then getting strong after you've gotten healthy. And then going out and showing a better product, you know, once a month versus playing in 10 tournaments and 10 weekends um, right. all around the country. You're going to lose weight. You're going to break down. You're going to put your arm at risk, not just yeah, for I the screen. High school coach Jeff, you know, we've, we've heard all this from Josh. Um, you know, you've had the relationship with him for at least four years. I've known him for, for four years. What can you recommend to, you know, guys that don't work with him right now, guys that aren't on your team, on the American team, what can you recommend to all the Canes teams all the way down to even, you know, the 15 and under guys? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a resource thing too, right? You know, not everybody has the resources to, uh, you know, pay for a trainer. You know, it's, it's, but if you do have the resources or can find a way to get the resources, I mean, Josh is, you know, one of the top three baseball trainers in my mind in the, in the whole country. And we just happen to have him on in the Canes organization. So really whether you're play for the Canes or not, if you're a baseball player and you're trying to take your, you know, your game to the next level and get your body where, uh, where you need it to be. Um, Josh is somebody that I would highly recommend reaching out to. I mean, he, he, tra he trained people remotely. So I know he has a way to do that. Um, yep. I wouldn't be weary of that. I mean, this is, too, we're 2020. I mean, this is not 1998. It's not 2010 for that matter. I mean, it's 2020. People are doing things remotely. People are getting pe information from places from all over. And it's not that crazy of an idea. If I, if I, had, the, if I had a son that was... 15, 16, 17 years old, um, I would fly him across the country two, three times a year, do a face-to-face, -face, uh, get my program from him. Or I wouldn't even be, really, I wouldn't even hesitate to get the program over the phone, over the computer, um, as long as I had the you know, proper equipment. Uh, it, the, being trained the right way, just like the Mike Bergsburg Christian guys, and obviously this is a a different level we're talking about, but some of the guys on our team are, are really good players, but just the, the time spent in the gym, like you take a Joel Tarr, who I got him, took the job May, two years ago. So May would be two years. He came in in September at 185, I think. 
Well, we started our season last week, and I do – my program at Fredericksburg Christian is all Josh. I mean, 95%. Um, and he came in at 195. He weighed 205 last week. And, I mean, our, our obviously our season got cut short. We had three scrimmages in one game. I think he was batting like 700 with a couple bombs. The ball's just jumping off that kid's bat. Now he's going to play Division II baseball. But – I know this is a common sense thing, right? But the ball coming off that bat, that kid's bat at 205 <laughs> versus the 185 right. is a little different. Yeah. Sounds and the mobility and, and, the, and the weight's in the right place, though. Right. It's not – the weight's not all up in the chest and the big biceps and the – those aren't baseball players. I mean, baseball players, the, the, the really good ones – they have the high rear ends. They've got big, strong backs, triceps, shoulders, legs. That's the that's the look, and all of and they and they've got whippy arms. They're not stiff like my sorry rear end, you know. Like, <laughs> like these kids are loose. They they, yeah. they they run loose. They throw loose. They swing loose, but it's with strength. And a lot of the things that Josh has turned me on to, it, it's the way to go for sure. Well, so Josh, how do people get in touch with you? What do we, what, I mean, I know you have, you know, you have on social media, you do a great job on your social media of posting, you know, different workouts. I know you, you we, we kind of um, mock the other workouts. You know, I saw the guy the other day with a squat and a squat and a barbell and <laughs> jumping up on a platform and on a balance board. I know your guys don't do that. Um, it's, all about, <laughs> it's all about mobility and doing the right things. How, how can they find you? Where, you know, other than, than this right here, how can they find you? Um, the first thing I would say is I would encourage everybody um, on Twitter to follow at Right Fitness. Um, that's just a baseball specific platform that um, I post. You know, I try to do, I try to get a couple of exercises out a week. Um, you know, um, some of it's me and my ugly mug demoing it and other, you know, put Matt McLean on there last, you know, uh, the yeah, other he's, day. Right. he's okay. Um, <laughs> you know, like I want people to understand that like it's an unconventional way to train, but if you want to be unconventionally good, you need to train unconventionally. Um, so it's not football lifting for baseball players. Um, and so I try to put out videos, um, you know, of guys doing, you know, to most of the country that people, you know, people think it's kind of abstract, you know, wow, I've never, I've never thought of it that way. And like, okay, you know, like there's more, there's more to being strong than deadlifting and, uh, you know, right. back squatting. Like we, we right. lift plenty, but I feel like it's pretty boring for me to, you know, post a video of, of Matt deadlifting or Corbin deadlifting when right. I can showcase the athleticism, you know, through these odd movements that we've done that, you know, help make them the athlete that they are. Um, so um, first off, I would say, I would say the Twitter account. Um, and then secondly, like if guys need stuff or if guys have questions, I mean, um, you can email me at, you know, J R E I D T. Um, 5SS, like San Francisco at Gmail, um, or, I mean, just slide into my DMs, um, and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, to, to reach back out. Like, it's not about, um, you know, the misconception is, is that, you know, like, I only train high-level first-round guys, or only, like, I don't care. Sure, I'm, yeah. I'm, I am right. fortunate, I am fortunate to be able to have those guys, like, uh, you know, I want the guy that is is willing to work, and we'll see where that work takes him. But if there's no ego and we come in with an open mind, um, you know, those are the guys that 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 I embrace the most um, and benefit the most in the gym. Um, so it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me for the first pick, or you don't get picked, or if you never play after high school. Um, you know, I have all makes and models in the gym, um, and everybody gets treated equally, trained equally. Um, so 
don't don't be scared by the alumni list. Like just if you have questions, reach out. I'm here to help. Absolutely. So here's what we'll do. We'll put uh, in the show notes. Uh, we'll make sure we put how to contact you, how to reach you, Josh. You've been an awesome guest. Um, I know these times are trying not only for your business, but also for your family because they don't get to see you that much. Uh, might be a good thing. Um, <laughs> but no, you, you've got the, you got the three beautiful kids. Um, you know, please take care of that. And, um, you know, Jeff, wonderful having you on as always. You guys are great friends. You, uh, you know, I, I look forward to your Snapchats. I look forward to your texts. You guys are awesome people. Um, <laughs> we'll make sure to uh, put information on how to contact you and uh, really appreciate your time today, guys. Hey, that's it for today's episode. Uh, check out the show notes if you want to reach out to Josh and we'll put some contact information there to reach out to Jeff as well. Have an awesome day, guys, and you guys stay safe. Make sure to wash your hands. See you, Rob. See you, boys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big shout out to Josh for joining us. Why don't you give him a follow on social media at Right Fitness? That's R-E-I-D-T Fitness. You can reach him at rightfitness.com. If you've enjoyed this episode, like, comment, subscribe, review, and share. Give us a follow on social media at Canecast Show. You can reach me directly on all social channels at Rob Younts or email me at robyounts at gmail.com. I welcome your feedback as we look to improve every single show. Stay safe, wash your hands, and don't complain about the bad hops because anybody can catch the good ones. Until next time, see you soon.